What's up YouTube? Nashmeister76 here. I just wanted to do a vinyl collection update since I haven't done one since May, I think. And I've had quite a few purchases since then. I'm leaving for school tomorrow, so this will probably be... Th these are probably going to be uh, the only records that... The only... Let me start that over. I'm probably not going to be buying any more vinyl until maybe Black Friday or somewhere around there, uh, Christmas time. And if I do buy more vinyl, it's going to be uh, pretty sparse. So I guess we'll start off the video here. I got this right after I finished doing the last vinyl collection update. Um, this is a reissue of Fu Manchu's debut EP. They originally released it in 1990, and it was a 7-inch, but this, um, they put an unreleased track on it and turned it into a 10-inch. And they also included an MP3 download card, which has another bonus track, unreleased song on it. So, there's five songs on the MP3 download, uh, four songs on this release, and three songs on the original. Um, it comes with a picture insert, and it is pressed on this bronzish, uh, I guess that's the best description for it, bronzish, uh, color vinyl. And, uh, it's a good EP. Uh, not for, not for new listeners of Fu Manchu, probably, but a good listen. This I got at the Fu Manchu show I went to in Chicago. Uh, in July. This is a reissue of King of the Road. It's a double vinyl. It was originally um, a single vinyl when it was first pressed in 1999. And um, one of the tracks on the American release was replaced with another track on the European release. And one of my favorite parts about this reissue is it has both tracks on it, as well as an unreleased uh, instrumental track. I love this back cover, and um, it's a gatefold. It's a cool gatefold. It's got pictures of the band and stuff. And it is pressed on this awesome lime green color vinyl. I love it. So this is uh, this was a good purchase. It's a little, little bent up in the corner here because I bought it from the... Uh, merch table at the show, but I've, it's, it's really not even all that noticeable. This right here is, um, a double L, a double LP of, it's, it's a compilation of songs by this group called Buzzsaw. They formed out of this garage rock band called the Lemon Drops. They had a song called I Live in the Springtime that was kind of kind of popular in the mid-60s. They're actually from uh, not too far from where I live. That's the... They, they're from the Chicago area. And uh, they f the two brothers that were in this band formed... They were in... God, I can't talk today. There were two brothers in the Lemon Drops... They formed another band called Watermelon, and then they formed this band called Buzzsaw. And there was a CD compilation of Buzzsaw material that came out in, I think, 1995. And I thought that had all of their recorded output, output but um, it obviously did not. This LP uh, sort of expands on that CD. It includes all the songs that were on the CD, but it also includes alternate versions, a few acetate versions it's um you know it's for psych collectors it's a pretty good album for people just listening looking for a cool psych uh record to listen to uh eh, you could probably do a little better but this is still really really good um it was expensive it's i think this was only pressed in spain if i'm not mistaken so it was pretty pricey, and uh, 
The only thing that really bugs me about it is it's not a gatefold. It's a single opening, and you put both LPs in the single opening. You probably can't see it very well, but that gets on my nerves a little bit, but what do you do? This right here is the soundtrack to a 1977 B-movie called The Van. It's a pretty cool movie for people who like the whole 70s car scene. Um, the dude that did this soundtrack, Sammy Johns, he had a hit single in, uh, I think, like, 75 called Chevy Van. And this um, that song is on this soundtrack as well as... Um, a bunch of other new songs that uh, he did for the movie. It's a pretty good soundtrack. It's uh, it's average, maybe a little above average, but um, I don't know. I guess for a B movie, you can't expect anything too great. But it's a fun listen. This is, I'm pretty sure it's the debut album by from Ohio Express. It's got a. Yummy, 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 which was a big hit of theirs. I got this as a recommendation from someone I follow on Instagram. I saw him talking about this band a lot, and I found a copy of this at one of my local record stores, and I said, well, I'll pick this up and give it a listen. And it's pretty good. It's, um, it's, it's like psych pop, bubblegum pop. This is really uh, the first record I've had that sort of fits into that bubblegum pop Buddha Records type thing. And it's pretty good. I, I'm impressed with it. This right here is the debut LP by Sir Lord Baltimore called Kingdom Come. And this thing rocks. This Easily, if you're into heavy music, you need to own this album. This is fantastic. This is a reissue. I wish I could find an original pressing, but I came upon the reissue, and it was priced pretty well, so I went ahead and bought it because I didn't have it yet, and it, it had been on my list of albums to get for a few years at least, and it does not disappoint. It's super crazy. The guitar and bass are so distorted on some of the songs. It's just insane crushing riffs just an awesome album this album right here is by a psych group from England called Tomorrow I've I've heard that they're one of the uh, commonly referred to as one of the quote unquote better psych groups this has um, Steve Howe in it who would later go on to play guitar in Yes, and someone else named Keith West, who I guess is a pretty uh, well-known dude. I think he sang. I actually have not listened uh, to this album yet. I bought it, I think, back in June, and I've just never got around to listening to it. I need to listen to it, because I hear it's good, but uh can't really tell you too much about this album, because I've never heard anything off of it. This is the debut LP uh, from the Go Go's called Beauty and the Beat. I can't explain it, but I've got a I've got a real thing for the Go Go's. I love the Go Go's. I love their music, and uh, I I really want to get Vacation. I could kind of go without getting, but um, Talk Show. That's the name of the third one. I really want to get Talk Show, and I haven't come across a copy on vinyl yet. But this is a good album. It's great 80s pop, and, you know, they all played their own instruments, so that's badass. This is by the guy that did the Van soundtrack, Sammy Johns. This is his, I think, only studio release from the 70s. Um, I got this before the Van soundtrack, and, you know, it's not an essential record, but I, I haven't... You don't come across them very often. It was cheap, so I figured, well, I'll pick it up. Haven't listened to it yet, but uh, I'm getting the vibe that this is sort of like a folky record. And I'm not super into folk. I never have been. I'm not sure why, but uh, who knows? Maybe this record will 
change my mind. This is a German compilation uh, of the best, well, let's, let's speak relatively here, the best of Kiss's solo albums. You can see uh, has the modified S's because they thought the lightning bolts looked like the uh, SS in Germany. So uh, it's got Ace and Peter on side one and Gene and Paul on side two. Now for me, Peter and Gene's solo albums really don't, I, I really don't like them all that much. Ace's and Paul's are awesome, but Peter's and Gene's, I don't know. But there's the back cover. It's got, you can see all the albums with the modified SS. This was a cool find. Um, it's original from what I can gather. And uh, I wasn't actively searching for it, but I was looking through the KISS section and I saw this and I'm like, oh hell yeah, I gotta pick this up. Because they really are uh, fairly rare. This is the 1983 debut record of a band called Zebra. They were from New Orleans. Uh, very Led Zeppelin sounding. They always get comparisons to Led Zeppelin and uh, they really do sound a lot like them. I think this is an awesome album. It's got uh the the musicality on it is uh I can't talk today. It's 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 outstanding really. The guitar playing especially is great. Um I would recommend it to fans of early 80s rock. This is their follow-up album, No Tellin' Lies. This one isn't quite as good as the first one. It's got some strong moments, but ultimately the first one is uh, the first one is one you should go after instead of this one. But it's cool to have. I'd been looking for these first two Zebra albums for a while, so I was happy when I found them. This is the Monkey's Greatest Hits. I really have wanted to get you know. All of the Monkees albums. I, I really started getting into the Monkees about a month and a half ago because they started showing their show on uh, the IFC channel. And the show is hit or miss. Some of it's really funny. Others, Other parts you're like scratching your head like how could anyone ever enjoy this? That's just how I feel personally. But I love their music. I know a lot of their more popular songs. They didn't really, you know play on or write, but there's just something about them that I can't help loving, so I had to pick this up. Here, I'll do the debut first. We have the debut of Anvil, Hard and Heavy, Canadian, uh, really almost proto-thrash metal. This was, this was released in 81, and really, you didn't have too many big, like, Metallica and Slayer and all them, they weren't around in 81. So this was really almost uh, some of the first of its kind. Uh, really quite phenomenal. The vocals kind of suck. I'm not a big fan of Anvil's vocals, but their playing is awesome, especially uh, their drums. If you haven't seen the documentary uh, Anvil, the story of Anvil, I would check it out. It's pretty cool. This is their follow-up, Metal on Metal. Metal on Metal is the song that uh, I guess they're kind of most famous for. I think this album's a little better than Hard and Heavy, personally. Um, I'd just been on the lookout for these two albums for a while, and I found them both on the same day about... probably about a month ago at this point. So that was pretty cool. I'm glad that I found them. They're fun, they're fun uh, metal records to listen to. And finally, we have a rather shabby copy of uh, Trace Ombres by ZZ Top. I really like the early ZZ Top. Um, I don't mess with too much of their stuff once they get into the 80s. It's okay, but I think the 70s stuff is really where it's at. And uh, I've been really trying to find ZZ Top's first album in Rio Grande Mud. Those two I don't see, you don't see very often, but I found this one for a pretty good price, and uh, so I bought it, because I've been trying to uh, get my hands on a copy for a while, and uh, 
It's a really good album. So that's it. Those are all the records I've acquired since probably earlier mid-May. And uh, yeah, there you go. Now you're all up to date on the collection. So we'll talk to you later.